Hello all, my name is Dr. Sajad Patan, and today we'll be talking about MRCM fast facts related to resuscitation. We'll be talking about some questions related to resuscitation which are being questioned repetitively on Part A examination of the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. We begin with approach to assessment of a patient. Basically, any patient which enters our ER have to be approached in a systematic way of A, B, C, D and E before we move on to a focused physical examination. First thing is airway. Airway and cervical spine control, especially in terms of trauma settings. At this point of time, we assess the patency of the airway and if the patient is able to maintain his airway. We, we can administer oxygen to the patient if the saturations are less than 94%. Next we move on to breathing where we assess the respiration in terms of inspection, percussion, palpation and auscultation. We can attach a pulse oximeter to check for the saturation. If the saturation appears to be acceptable, then we need not administer oxygen. The British Thoracic Society recommends any patient who comes to the ER with a saturation less than 94% to be administered oxygen. Next, we move on to circulation where we assess central and peripheral pulses, capillary refill, central as well as peripheral, blood pressure. At this point of time, we can obtain IV accesses, get blood pressure reading, attach the patient to the monitor. Next, we move on to disability, where we check for the neurological status of the patient, check for the pupillary response, the Glasgow Coma Scale, the motor functions of the limb, a finger stick glucose, as hypoglycemia can one of the precipitating factor for decreased neurological sensations. Next we move on to exposure where we expose the patient completely to look for any obvious deformities or injuries as well as to obtain temperature of the patient before we move on to a focused systematic examination. Any, page, any examinee appearing for the party exam should be fluent with, un, with understanding the rhythms on an ECG. I would recommend know, having a knowledge of recognizing normal patterns and abnormal patterns which are commonly tested. Normal sinus rhythm, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, VTAC, V fibrillation, torsades despontis, which is a special kind of rhythm where magnesium is used as part of treatment. Knowing the different types of pericardias, the first degree, second degree type 1 and 2, and complete heart block, that is the third degree. I want to emphasize the fact over here that we do not treat bradycardias unless the patient is a unless the patient is symptomatic what i mean to say is you don't treat a patient because he has bradycardia unless he has symptoms or he has second or third degree heart block what are the signs of instability Consider a normal heart pumping blood to the brain and you're conscious and alert. If it is decreased, if the heart is having abnormal rhythm and it's not able to pump the blood to the brain, you have altered sensorium, dizziness or altered level of consciousness or loss of consciousness. Similarly, if the heart is pumping normally, the coronaries get filled during diastole. 
If that doesn't happen, you may have signs of ischemia or chest pain or signs of palmedema or congestive heart failure that is crackles, bilateral basin, shortness of breath. If the heart is not pumping adequately, the blood is not going to the peripheries. So you may have hypertension. So blood not going to the brain, not going to the coronaries and not going to the peripheries are the signs of instability. If any of these signs are present, you would be giving them some kind of electricity or shock. The amplitude of shock differs and the terminologies do differ. For tachycardias with pulse, we call it synchronized cardioversion. For tachycardia without pulse, that means almost dead, like VTAC without pulse and VFib. These people are without pulse, almost dead, D for dead and D for defibrillation. For bradycardia, we call it as pacing because the amplitude of current is very low. The pacing can be done by placing pads on the chest. Call it, we call it as transcutaneous pacing or by putting in the wires through the central venous axis, which we call as invasive intravenous pacing. VTAC without pulse and defibrillation. You immediately start with CPR, call for help, call for early defibrillation. You can use two drugs here. First is adrenaline, one is to 10,000, 10 ml of one is to 10,000, 10 ml of one is to 10,000 just before the third shock. Amiodarone, 300 milligrams IV after the third shock. Think of H's and T's, hypoxia, hypovolemia, hypohypokalemia, H iron acidosis, tamponade, tension pneumothorax, thrombosis, pulmonary and coronary thrombosis, toxins, calcium channel blockers, paracetamol overdose, TCA overdose, beta blocker overdose. In pediatric patients, we need to adjust the drugs doses and the voltage. The other part of the algorithm is asystole and pulseless electrical activities. Any organized electrical activity occurring in the absence of a pulse is pulseless electrical activity. Here you do not use any kind of shock. The only thing which you use is adrenaline 10 ml of 1 is to 10,000 every alternate cycles, high quality CPR and think of H's and T's. The stages of hypovolemic shock in trauma settings have been tested in the past for the MRCEM Part A examinations. Remember the stages of hypovolemic shock 1, 2, 3 and 4, blood loss up to 15% of total blood volume is stage 1, 15 to 30% is stage 2, 30 to 40% of blood loss is stage 3 and more than 40% is stage 4. Think of a tennis game here, 0 15, 15 30, 30 40 and 40. Plus, remember the pulse rate and blood pressure remain normal in stage 1. There is tachycardia in stage 2, however, blood pressure remains normal. Urine output slightly decreases. In stage 3 is the stage where you get gross reduction in urine output and hypotension happens in this stage. In stage 4, the patient has negligible urine output. Resuscitation in pregnancy. Know the physiological changes that occur in pregnancy. Give them left lateral position so as to avoid compression to venous return. The drugs and the doses are the same. The algorithm do not change. Early intubation is recommended 
to prevent aspiration. Only OBGYN consult to be done and deliver the baby by caesarean section. Perimortem caesarean section is recommended within 4 minutes ideally in order to save the life of the mother and or the baby if the baby is beyond the viable age group. Rapid sequence intubation. A brief knowledge of the drugs used for induction and paralysis have been tested in the past. You need to know the drugs and the doses, the advantages and the disadvantages of particular groups. Etomidate, midazolam, fentanyl, ketamine and propofol are the common induction agents that are used for, indu for rapid sequence intubation. Remember, etomidate can suppress HPA access transiently and therefore should be used with caution or avoided in septicemia or septicemic shock. Midazolam is a benzodiazepine drug. The antidote is flumazenil. Do not use flumazenil in drug use drug abusers, patients who are on chronic benzodiazepine as it may precipitate seizures. Midazolam is shorter half-life than diazepam. Flumazenil has a much shorter half-life than midazolam. Fentanyl is much safer, a potent analgesia, 100 times more potent than morphine. Fentanyl is an opioid so it can cause all those symptoms which an opioid causes. The antidote is naloxone or naltrexone. Fentanyl causes less hypertension as compared to morphine. Fentanyl may cause rigid chest syndrome. Ketamine, drug of choice for intubation in asthmatics as it is a bronchodilator. In terms of paralytic agents, depolarizing agents are succinylcholine, which is commonly used. It is quick acting with a very small duration of action, which is up to 10 minutes. Lastly, a knowledge of anaphylaxis have been tested on part A. Remember the drugs used in anaphylaxis. Adrenaline given IM. 0.3 to 0.5 milligrams, 1 is to 1000. Remember, it's 1 is to 1000 over here as compared to research station where it is 1 is to 10,000. IV adrenaline can be given, but under supervision of a senior consultant, it is used only if anaphylaxis is presented with anaphylactic shock. You can use steroids. H1 and H2 blockers. Observe these patients for 4 to 6 hours in the emergency department. Thank you so much 